is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Righty, alrighty, alrighty. Good morning, Ira. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. Last uh, morning in Vegas, heading out on a flight later today. It's been a productive week, an interesting week, and uh, you just gain a lot of insight walking the hallway to those two buildings, Thomas and Mack Center and Cox Pavilion, and sort of hearing the buzz. The buzz is right in front of you. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. Um, by the way, before we get into all the basketball stuff, I opened the show with, if you're a basketball fan, if your kid's a basketball nut, you know, you could have seen Dwayne Wade yesterday. You could see Alonzo Mourning. You could see some Bam out of bio. And then a slew of so many young guys around, uh, older veteran players. And everybody's so nice. People are taking pictures. Caleb Martin must have taken like 100 pictures yesterday as I was watching. Um, the experience for a basketball junkie, if they come out here for a week, is second to none. They won't, they won't have this kind of experience at any time throughout the year except here I, I would imagine yeah I mean there were some guys who were unapproachable sort of arrived with their people and were surrounded but but yeah. it, but if you just you know when you think about the limited access to any player even a 12th man on an NBA bench during the season compared to out here it's absolutely night and day and uh, and everyone eats it up and you look at these stands and you're like wow this is a meaningless game the score doesn't count these guys aren't getting paid and the stands are absolutely jammed yeah, it's fun. It, it, it's I, I call it a carnival of basketball because that's what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. All right, so now we've got the uh, the whole story with Donovan Mitchell, which, by the way, you you thought that they would trade him, but I still get the sense, and I talked about this leading into to your uh, segment. I think you were able to to hear a little bit of it. I still think this is more about Utah saying, "Well, we got a lot of desperate teams out there. Well, somebody's going to overpay for him, also." And it's almost like they want to do what Green's done and, and collecting all kinds of picks in New Orleans and all that kind of stuff. So uh, to me, if the Knicks do make this trade or anybody, they're going to pay a price that I don't think a Heat fan should feel jealous about because I think it's going to be a, a, a price that's way too steep for the talent that you're acquiring. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because if, if you look at these rosters, and let, let's say the Knicks make the deal and send out five draft choices, um, even if they don't send out R.J. Barrett, and I think they have to. So when you look at the Knicks roster, you might have R.J. Barrett, you might have Julius Randle, you might have Donovan Mitchell, you might have Jalen Brunson, but your leading man, I, I don't even know. Well, matter of fact, I'll throw it back in your court for a second here. Of R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, Donovan Mitchell, and Jalen Brunson, who's the best player of those four? Mitchell. Okay, so Mitchell. let's say Donovan Mitchell. If Donovan Mitchell is the best player on your team, you don't rank that high in the East. I mean, you look at it. Joel Embiid, best player in the Sixers. Jalen Brown, uh, Jaylen, not Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, number one on the Celtics. Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy Butler, number one on the Heat. You go down the hierarchy in the Eastern Conference, obviously Giannis Antetokounmpo, number one on the Milwaukee Bucks. You go down the line there, all of a sudden, you know where you fall in? You fall in with a team like a Chicago Bulls, who you can make an argument that Zach Levine is their best player. So at best, you're a second-tier playoff team in yeah. the Eastern Conference if that's your best player. So the Knicks for years have been in the wilderness trying to make Julius Randle their best player and paying him, trying to make uh, R.J. Barrett more than he is in the draft and eventually having to pay him. Jalen Brunson, a ridiculous overpay. And now an overpay in terms of picks with Donovan Mitchell – it's hard to get an alpha in this league. You and I have argued about Bam and whether he is or not. He's not, or at least that's the argument on the Orlando Alzagari show and the accurate Pembroke Pines report twice a week. We get that. Kyle Lowry clearly at this point in his career isn't, but Jimmy is, and Pat still wants more. So what I would say is this, and I think the Jazz realize it. If Donovan Mitchell is your best player, you only go so far. So right. if you load up on draft choices and you get 12 draft choices and five lottery picks, maybe you hit on the guy because that's what it takes in the NBA these days. And that's why Pat Riley is always looking for the guy. Shaquille O'Neal, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade in the draft, Jimmy Butler in free agency. You're the guy had better be one of the top players in the league. Or you know what? 
You're going to go out in the first round like Utah did every, you know, every year or every other year. You're not up there with the Luka Dantiches in the Western Conference. You're not up there with Kawhi Leonard or Paul George in the Western Conference. You're not up there with whoever you want to cast as Phoenix's leading man, if it's Devin Booker or someone else. That's the difference. So, yeah, you know what? The Knicks might be able to drop the confetti and balloons because they'll win a playoff round. Okay, so now let me ask you something. This is kind of interesting. I just thought about this. So think about the price that you're going to have to pay to, to acquire Donovan Mitchell. It's an enormous price. The Atlanta Hawks just acquired DeJounta Murray, who might be just a hair under a Donovan Mitchell, right? Because you'll say and maybe Donovan He doesn't have Mitchell. the outside shot, so he's right. going to be a little that's, limited. That's, yeah. that's exactly where I would give Mitchell the only edge is the outside shot. Everything else, he's either equal. He might be even a better defender than, than Donovan Mitchell, actually. So think about the value of acquiring DeJounta Murray compared to Donovan Mitchell. Atlanta got a steal. If you're going to pay that much for Mitchell, I'd rather get a slightly lesser player that might be a little bit more complete on the defensive side. Oh, sure. Absolutely. That's yeah, much, much better defender, maybe a better fit for what Atlanta needs alongside Trey Young. Well, also. Anybody, anybody in this league, if you have a guy that can defend perimeter players, that's that's a priceless thing in this league, Ira, as you know, because the perimeters, you know, we grew up where you had to defend the interior, then you went to the outside. Here they go to the outside for the, to the inside now. So Murray becomes an even more valuable player. So that's what I'm saying, that whatever price Atlanta paid is – minuscule compared to what uh, Knicks are going to pay and that's for a why slightly I, better player. If I'm the Heat, I put together my package without corrupting the rest of my roster. So in other words, if I'm Andy Yellisberg and Pat Riley and Adam Simon and Nick Harrison, I'm sitting in the room and I'm saying, okay, how far can we go in an offer with Donovan Mitchell where we don't then hurt Jimmy Butler at 33, Kyle Lowry at 36 in our win now window? I don't think they give a rat's ass if they trade a 26 or 28 uh, 27 to 28 first oh, round first pick. Yeah, they don't care right. about that. Paddle, moved, paddle have moved on, you know, to, to green to green or I'll give you Tyler and Duncan, dude. I'll give you right. Tyler and Duncan. I'm not parting with Bam for Mitchell. I part for Bam for for um so for I, Grant. So, right. So I think you know your package, and your package to make the math work is this is is uh Tyler Hero, is Duncan Robinson, and a minimal salary. Probably a choice of any four of these players, big O. Nikolaovic. Uh, Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, or Omer Yurtsevin. And just like you sort of were going to stop. You, you already signed me, Caleb, so I'm happy already. Okay, right. So so you're not going to stop with one of those four guys as a deal breaker and probably at least two first-round picks. And if they take Jovic, it's like three first-round picks. You you do that. You still have Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, Donovan Mitchell, and anyone, and, and Caleb Martin, and you're fine. And, and you're veterans fine. will be coming to play roles here. The and, if you're sending, and if you're sending out three for one, all of a sudden you open up two more roster spots. So like you said, whether it's a Markeith Morris coming back or no, another no. veteran who wants one well, thing no. or another veteran who wants to win, all of a sudden those minimum spots look a lot better. So, yeah, I think you do it that way. You know what? There are teams that make crazy trades. Minnesota made a crazy trade with all those picks for Rudy Gobert, who can't even stay on the floor in the playoffs. But you know what? Desperate teams go to desperate measures. Minnesota is Minnesota. A-Rod came in in ownership. They want to make a splash. They took a chance. That's what the Knicks always do, right. is the Knicks clear all the salary cap space and then realize... Oh, crap. All we got from our salary cap space was Amari Stoudemire. All we got from our salary cap space was Julius Randle. That's what they do there. They make the moves of a desperate team, and you wind up in a desperate situation. Exactly. And that, that's why it's I, – I'm not – when one of the, one of the uh, listeners was like, oh, I'm, oh, if Miami loses Donovan in New York, I'm, I'm not concerned because if they do, it's because New York paid a Carmelo-like price and – you know, Utah is going to benefit from from all of this. Now, the question is, does the, do they have the, you know, I know Ainge is there and all that. Now you've got to nail those picks now with everything that you've done. Well, I, I don't think so. I, I think Danny's going to do what everyone does with these picks. Is you hold the picks and you move them to someone else for, for their stuff yeah, okay. when you feel the time is right. So if you collect 12 picks and you can send four for this player and four for that player, maybe it works. 
You know what this is? You know what this is, Big O? And I hate to touch but on the matter that you... I know it's called frugal over there. I think they want to get the young guys so they can get them early and they're part of their career. I think they're trading first-round picks like crypto. No one knows what it's worth necessarily, but they're saying, oh, this is fascinating, this stuff. Let's play with this stuff a little. That's really what it is. Just like crypto is not backed by anything but faith. Draft picks are not backed by anything but faith that you could turn them into something. It really is the NBA's alternate currency. You have salary cap cash for legitimate free agents, and you have draft choices in the ether. It could be worth something great. It could be Michael Beasley at number two. You just don't know. By the way, there's there's DeFi, there's smart contracts, there's there's a, there's a lot of things that go with crypto that actually is very tangible. It's not really intangible, and it's not faith okay i'll, I'll, say, with I'll say with fun Those for coin now. is faith those okay. coin is all about faith and meme and and it's just one of those it has hot right. it has no no electronic and technical uh uh value to it whatsoever you know what i'm saying so you know there, there are things that it's more than just faith but i get you all right the other thing that's taking over the internet and all that and to me i'm sorry i'm i'm old school you know uh, the, the guy that tells me, well, no, he's a good father. He provides for his child. That's not a good father. That's what a father does. You're mm -hmm. supposed to provide for your child. I'm not impressed. Well, Kyle Lowry videos are flying all over the place. He's in great shape and shooting. And again, I'm not impressed, Ira. I'm happy that he's lost the weight, but but you don't, but you don't even know, you don't even know that. Be. You, you remember the pictures we saw a couple of years ago of He-Man Tyler Hero when he had these like Lou Ferrigno kind of arms. It looks like whole, that big, yeah. <laughs> and then he showed up and he looked like Tyler Hero. And even after this season, Pat Riley said, Tyler needs to bulk up a little more. Yeah. You can do plenty with your Photoshop, with the angle that you take the picture. And you know what? I don't give a rat's ass what you look like the second week of July, the second week of, June, of, of August, the second week of September. I care about what you look like in training camp the second week of November, December, January, and especially April and May. So yeah. it's one thing to have the time off and not traveling and be able to put your total focus on that and not eating road food. Let's get to the season and see what you look like when the minutes matter. July matters for the kind of players we're watching out here in Vegas, you know, for the Orlando Robinsons and the Jamal Keynes and players like that. It doesn't matter for Kyle Lowry. Matter of fact, I don't give a crap if a player is living in Krispy Kreme in July, as long as he's ready to go at the end of September. Uh, you just reminded me, we, we ate at this place called Sicky's Garage, which, by the way, awesome food. It's at that mall down the south end of the strip that... the. the Town Center, it's called. Yeah, they've got all kinds of shops. The Apple Store is there and all kinds. Of, it's called Sicky's Garage. And they have a burger that is, uh, we didn't have it, but it's it's a burger with two glazed donuts. Oh, I, I think you're going to be coming home with a little extra cholesterol, but that's your decision. No, no, not, I, did, I did not even try to eat that thing. Are you kidding me? No way, man. No way. I had some chicken. Relax, okay? I didn't even have the... Uh, the meaty stuff as it is. So I had a little chicken. I was I was a good boy, actually, but it was delicious. It is good. If you want Sicky's Garage there, excellent food out there. Uh, by the way, just to kind of finish off with the little summer league stuff. Well, babe, first of all, what do you think about the Duran issue? Are you hearing anything? Because it's kind of quiet. And the fact that I haven't seen Pat Riley at all in summer league that kind of tells me, I don't know, man. I wonder if the Godfather's working this thing behind the scenes. When the Heat did all their contracts and stayed below the hard cap, they did it for a reason. They believe this could be an explosive trade market. So we've spoke about Donovan Mitchell. We've spoken previously about Kevin Durant. That's just the tip of the iceberg. When there's very little free agency movement like we've seen this year, the movement comes somewhere else. It comes on the other end. So I think the Heat are laying back and saying, you know what? On our board at 601 Biscayne, we don't have only Mitchell and only Durant. We think this these six players also could shake free. So the Heat are looking at all the possibilities and what they put in play. Once they put that Duncan Robinson 18, 16, 18 million dollar contract in play, that's their last salary matching chip to really make some of these deals work. So then it's going to go willy nilly like the Knicks and just throw in a poo poo platter of a bunch of stuff for one player. And then all of a sudden, oh, we don't have anything left to offer. They're going to sit there and they're going to look at names that you and I have not even discussed and say, you know what? This coaching situation is a little uneven in this place. This team thinks it's better than they are. This guy's an injury away from decimating the rest of that roster. 
and the Heat have those other names also. Again, oh, this has been a, a theme for our Acura Pembroke Pine reports here. I know we want the immediacy of just getting it done so we can all go on vacation. This could also happen in August. It can happen in September. It can happen after players who were signed this offseason become tradable either on December 15th or on January 15th. It could happen at the trading deadline. We all want something now. But it won't happen until Durant happens. That's the thing, right? It, it, You're not going to go for John Collins or no. anybody else until you find out about Durant. But, that's at the the right, right? but at the right price for Donovan Mitchell, I think the Heat might. And I think yeah. that's what Danny Ainge is doing. And that's why the news came out last yeah, night. Yeah, but we're not even in that neighborhood because if what? they're dealing with the Knicks, then that means they're in a stratosphere that the Heat are like, but yeah, yeah. I yeah. think what Danny Ainge did is he saw all these juicy bits out there tossed around for Durant. And he goes, oh, I'd like to get me some of that. So I think Danny Ainge in Utah is trying to preempt Durant by going, hey, if you wait on Durant, this guy's going to be gone. So you have to make a decision. It's a really smart strategy. I would not be smart. I would not be surprised in coming days when the enablers, when Shams and Woj and Chris Haynes and Mark Stein start mentioning another name. Ah, oh, John Collins all of a sudden is out there. Indiana's really doing it. Because all these teams see everyone pushing their chips to the middle of the table. And I think a lot of these teams are going, hey, I like some of those chips. They're nice and shiny. We want to get involved. The manipulation here is unreal. By the way, the guy that I like under the radar that I think has been a little bit of an underachiever over there, but I think he'll be a, an excellent player here is Miles Turner. I, I just think his his length, the fact that he can shoot the three, uh, I think the, that if they can pry that guy away from Indiana, that's one of those guys that you won't have to pay a whole ton for and I think you can I, – I think he'd become a hell of a player in Miami system. See, I'm going to go John Collins over Miles Turner for the reason that I know John Collins You're going to pay a lot more for John Collins. Well, but he wants to be here and he's from here. Miles Turner has been very sort of flighty. I'm not so sure that basketball is number one on his list. I'm not so sure that he has a preferred destination. I think John Collins gets here. I think all of a sudden he has everything he wants. He has the money. He has the location. He has a title contender. So that's another good name. Again, this is not over. As soon as I step away and take my first vacation day, the world's going to explode, and I know that. So John Collins, I got the money. I got the power. And now, oh, all right, I'm not going to finish that. All right, follow him on Twitter at Ira Heat Beat, And, of course, subscribe to the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Catch his work every single day and catch him here every week doing his thing with the Acura Pembroke Pines, Miami Heat, and NBA Report. Ira, as always, thank you for the time, my friend. Appreciate you. Have a great Happy week. Monday and our Acura Pembroke Pines Report at a normal hour in a normal time zone. Thank you, Big O. You got it. There you go, my brother. No doubt about that. We'll both be back in the East. There it is. Ira Winderman.